So I want to give you so far what is uh, the simplest way of understanding this third discipline, become the creator. What does that mean? How do we begin to do that? So I'll start by asking you a question. Where is your center of power? Where is your center of power? Where does all your creative power come from? Get as specific as possible. Boom, I knew Patty was gonna get it first. (laughs) I am, yeah? I am is my center of power. And all the answers you guys gave are somewhat the same thing, right? My will is my heart. My heart is my uh, power, my I am. These are all kind of synonyms, but let's get as specific as we can get. The I am principle in you is the godly principle in you, right? That's the creative principle in you is your I am presence, your I am knowledge. And that's also the creative principle, the godly principle in all living things. But the awareness of that principle is not fully active in all living beings. We've talked about through the densities model, first and second density life forms don't have yet the awareness of the I am presence in themselves, the awareness of God in themselves. And most third density beings don't even have that, right? Most third density beings still don't have much of any awareness of themselves as creator. But because we're in the third density now, there is a kind of subconscious knowing that we are the creators of our reality because some self-awareness is available in third density. So to come out of third density into the fourth is to begin realizing the godly presence within us. And so we're taught by all sages, all spiritual teachings across time, say the same thing, place your attention on the I am. Notice the I am feeling in you and that is your awareness of God in you. So each one of us, was created by the creator to be a creator. We're just a microcosm of the macrocosm and there's just one creator. So we're all the one creator of our personal life and personal reality, right? Each one of us is the governing principle of our life through the direction that we're pointing our I am power. So to become the creator has to begin with realizing that power right? That you're not a victim, but you are the creator of your reality. And now what are you going to do with this new information? Where are you going to aim this new information? How are you going to utilize it? Because the fact the very fact that you have it demands you to become a conscious user of it, right? It's sort of like if you're holding a box of dynamite, all of a sudden, once you know you're holding a box full of dynamite, there's an immediate sense of responsibility, right? Of, oh, I better, I better take good care of this and use it properly or bad things can happen. Well, you have a power within you so much more infinitely potent and powerful than a box of dynamite that you should be using grave care and responsibility over it. Shouldn't you? So if that's true, if we need to begin becoming aware of how we're using the I am principle, let's talk about, you know, you know, I love metaphysics, right? Let's talk about the metaphysics of creation so that we have no remaining doubts of how this actually works, how this actually happens. So again, these are honestly very high level kind of metaphysical concepts we're going to be talking about. And so I, again, I try to deliver them in a way that's as simple as possible, but if y'all didn't want the high level stuff, you wouldn't be in Ford University, right? So let's, let's go deep into the metaphysics and see if we can hang together on this. Uh, highly recommend taking notes, by the way. <laughs> so let's start with the fact of how creation works. One of the biggest hangups is that we understand creation wrong through ego consciousness. Ego sort of convinces us that creation not, not only doesn't exist, but that we have no creative power at all, that we're purely a victim of what happens to us. And there's no rhyme or reason for why things happen, right? They just happen because we're victims. But in a universe of oneness, all creation must be in cooperation with everything else. This is what we've been hammering, right? Fourth density consciousness, oneness, relationship, 
everything depends on everything else, which means my creation has to be in cooperation with everything else. Does that make sense? And why is that? In the chat, let me know. Why is that, that my creation has to be in cooperation with everything else? It's a principle, a mantra we hammer here. Why? Boom, Peter got it. All things exist in relationship. So my creation has to come in relationship to the whole, doesn't it? So mm, I hope you didn't overlook that one, guys. I hope you let that one sink in because the implications of that, if you can realize it, are massive. It'll change the entire way you begin your, your reality creation, your visualization. When you keep that principle in mind, let all my creations be in loving relationship to the universe because that's the law of the universe. So when we try to create our reality and things don't manifest instantly, the ego gets all discouraged and bent out of shape and full of doubt. Why? Because it doesn't understand this law. It doesn't understand that everything I do has to happen in cooperation. If I try to act in separation, if I try to act in isolation, I am in a dream world, right? Because th there's no separation in reality. So I'm immediately creating karma for myself because I'm violating the law of oneness relationship. So when we try to create our reality and things don't manifest instantly, the ego gets full of doubt. See, I'm, I can't create my reality. I've been thinking about this for days and nothing's happened yet. Huh? These are the thoughts. So I'll ask you this question. Why should the whole universe grind to a halt so that you can have your manifestation today? Right, Sandy. It, the universe doesn't come to a grinding halt, does it? Everything continues going in its, in its pattern, in its trajectory, in its evolution. And so if I have no patience to allow the universe to manifest my I am desire in harmony and cooperation so that my desire is not interfering with any other living being's desire, that may take what appears to be time in the 3D. <laughs> But when you're not living as a linear being, an individual person bound in time, time doesn't matter to you anymore. Right? How long it takes for your desire to manifest is inconsequential to you. You know that your I am principle, your I am power is unfailing and immutable and invincible, right? Whatever you decree will be made manifest if and only if you can hold your I am attention on it. So the I am is... The I am power we invest in anything has to be turned like a cruise ship, right? Because I am has tremendous power and inertia behind it. It's the creative principle of life. So if you've been pointing your I am in victimhood for 30 years, don't get all bummed out when you don't feel empowered after a week of practicing reality creation. <laughs> Isn't that common sense? Don't be surprised. You've been investing your I am God principle and power into victimhood for decades. So give yourself a little time to shift out of that reality and into the empowerment reality that you want. So because, re because the I am principle seems to take time to really direct in drastically different ways, then we have to develop the spiritual quality of patience in order to be a creator of our reality. So this is why consistency and unwavering determination is like the magic secret of manifestation. Consistency and unwavering determination is your proof that you know you're the creator. Like imagine a king who kept forgetting he was a king or like kept feeling like he's not a king but just a lowly peasant. And so the, the royal elites come into the courtroom for the king to meet with them and decide the laws of the land and whatnot. And they're like, oh, great king, please tell us what shall be the monetary laws of our society. And the king is like, I'm just not feeling much like a king today, guys. I'm sorry. I don't think I can decree laws. <laughs> no one's going to listen to my flimsy laws. Who am I? And keeps feeling disempowered. Pretty soon they're going to be like, we got to get a new king in here, man. <laughs> we need a king who knows how to declare his word into action. That's what the universe wants you to be, a king or a queen of your reality. Be the creator. So if you can't even hold your attention on, I want to be abundant, 
for more than a few hours before you just get overwhelmed with lack again, well, you just keep canceling out your I am power, right? And you have the power to do that. You have the power to cancel out your creations as much as to create them. You're God, right? Only gods can create. So the I am word you declare cannot fail. The universe itself would have to pass away for your I am power not to manifest what it desires, what it decrees, right? But the only reason it doesn't is because you keep canceling it out with doubt and inconsistency. So you don't really know you're the creator yet is what that means. So let's take the example of if you're dead broke and you desire to be a billionaire. We often talk about, you know, you've heard the teaching of parallel realities, parallel timelines, and we shift into parallel timelines based on where our I am is pointing. If we feel like I'm unworthy of love, then we'll keep manifesting a reality where my unworthiness of love keeps manifesting. I keep getting dumped, uh, loved ones keep abandoning me, whatever. And if we want to shift into a lifetime experience where we're loved greatly and experience rich love, then we have to take our I am attention away from that one and point it to the one we want. Literally, you're always doing this with the finger pointed, the I am pointed, and it's pointing over here towards victimhood. You just have to do this, right? But that's your attention. Your attention is the I am principle. So if you can't get your attention off the feelings of unworthiness, well, then you can't stop creating it, can you? Because your word creates reality. So if you, if you were dead broke and you wanted to be a billionaire, a person who's dead broke is very far away from the timeline of them that's a billionaire. Can you see that? So if the dead broke person wants to manifest a billion dollars, it may take a lot of seeming time for that manifestation only because they have to shift through a lot more parallel realities than let's say a millionaire who desires to become a billionaire. That person is likely, not in every case, right? Someone could win the lottery or something, but in almost every case, the millionaire who wants to be a billionaire is gonna be able to shift into that timeline faster than the dead broke person can because they're closer to that timeline. But either way, it's gonna take some kind of time for you to create that reality, which is why every day, every moment, every minute, you should be affirming who you are, who you wanna be, and what you desire. What reality you want to create. This is how you step into your God essence. Your, your divinity is to become the creator. But this is also why we don't teach this to those who are brand new in the spiritual path because the ego is likely far too strong for them to truly be loving, benevolent creators of their reality. If you, if you throw a bunch of law of attraction manifestation teachings at a newcomer, it's gonna really empower their ego to use this new spiritual tool to go get all my outcomes and desires. And so they may waste a lot of time manifesting the outer things that don't actually change anything about them. Then they would spend manifesting the inner things, the states of being, the qualities of consciousness, the version of myself that I'm most excited to be. So once we raise our consciousness a bit, we start forgetting about outer things so much and we really want to manifest new aspects of self, right? We want to manifest more abundance within ourself, more empowerment within ourself, more self-love in ourself and experience greater happiness in ourself. That requires the third discipline, creator consciousness. So because this is a no victim universe, we have to step into our role as creators of our reality. Otherwise, the ego will create it for us, right? If the autopilot default mode, outer self, the false self, ego, is left to be the sole and lone creator, oh boy, we're gonna be creating some really harsh realities for a while. So here's how we defeat victim consciousness is with creator consciousness, right? We have to awaken to the fact that your thought and feeling create your realities. All thoughts and feelings you have are manifestation tools. And so the current disharmony in my life 
is the direct result of what I've created in the past with my thoughts and feelings. But never once has something happened to you that you did not create or call forth, right? With where you place your I am attention, whether in this life or the previous. So when we, when we actually let that in, and I want you to let that in for a second, nothing can be imposed on me that I did not create, whether consciously or unconsciously. Because remember, you never stop being the creator. You're always pointing, you're always creating, but you're doing that pointing or creating consciously or unconsciously. Those are your only two options, but you can't not create, yeah? When you see that, you start to accept, okay, nothing that's ever happened to me was imposed upon me against my will. But at some level, at some point in time, I created that future reality through where I was placing my thought and my feeling and my attention. When you actually let that in, there's actually a great kind of sigh of relief, isn't there? Oh, face the facts. We live in a no victim universe. Ego will try to resist that at first initially. I don't want to live in a no victim universe. I want to be a victim. But then when you realize how actually peaceful that is to realize that you're in full control of your reality, you just didn't know that you were. It's like, ah, oh, that feels kind of good actually. Bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders there. That reality is not imposing itself upon me. And so if we're honest with ourselves, if we're being honest with ourselves, guys, we should all be very thankful that our lives aren't a whole lot worse. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I spent a large portion of my early life constantly dwelling on negative thoughts and feelings. I've probably thought billions of negative thoughts. And yet, even when I look back at my former life and all the things I suffered from, I have to go, wow, the universe is benevolent. <laughs> wow, the universe is kind. Like if I'm, if every negative thought was really going to create something negative on that same frequency, I would think my life should have been a whole lot worse. And of course, people are living a whole lot worse lives in terms of the physical suffering they're generating. But the point is, if we're all being honest with ourselves, with how responsible or irresponsible that we are with our minds, we should all be very thankful for where we are today. Clearly, we live in a very loving, forgiving, benevolent universe, but it still does impose the proper consequences of every action in some way that will, that will produce evolution in you. So you do have to suffer in some way from all your thoughts and feelings that you give empowerment, I am power to. So that's why we say, hey, you gotta stop believing all those wrong beliefs. If you don't change your belief in lack, attachment, and control, the ego's got you by the reins, right? It's driving you. You're a puppet on its strings. So cut those strings, those three strings, by disavowing yourself from these beliefs. Outer dominion of our world can only come through the recognition of the I am presence within us, that God is the governing intelligence of your life, active within you as the I am. So where you place your attention, we've heard, is where you place your energy. But even more than that, where you place your attention is where you place your I am. We say the mind is the agent of the spirit and the body is the agent of the mind. So spirit is I am within us. Right? So the mind only really knows I, I am. So everything the mind places its attention on, it endows that I to that thing. So in a sense, it's as if the mind only knows something by becoming it. And we call that the mental activity of identifying or claiming. That's the first definition of ego that we give you in Master Your Mind. Ego is the mental activity of identifying because that's all the mind can actually do until higher awareness dawns. You have to identify with everything you see, labels, judgments, ideas, thoughts, attachment, resistance. You label it something, right? So if that's all the mind can do, then wouldn't it make sense we wanna place that I attention on positive, divine, heavenly things as often as possible? And to be very careful not to place our I am attention on negative things for very long. Like if someone is gossiping, if you're gonna get involved in that conversation in a way 
that you dwell on the negative, such as, yeah, what a jerk. I can't believe he did that. You're inviting that energy into your kingdom, right? Because you're giving your I am to that negative idea or thought. So we're not saying to ignore reality and pretend things aren't happening. We're saying all you need to do is be the witness of your reality. Notice everything that's happening, but place your I am attention where you want. Place your I am attention in what you want to build and create. Remember when we said your state of being only has two functions, contraction or expansion? Well, likewise, so does our attention, right? Because our attention is our state of being. So you can only focus your energy in two different ways, by placing it on something or by withdrawing it from something. I give my I am, I receive back my I am. So in that way, seeing this metaphysical law, which I hope you can see it, then it makes perfect sense that I can cancel out wrong I am investments by consciously withdrawing my power and energy from it, just like I can consciously place my attention where I do want it. This is uh, what A Course in Miracles says in the lesson that we reviewed this week in LTC. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. I rule my mind, which I alone must rule. There's no other creator of your life, right, but you. So then you have to both be conscious of withdrawing your attention from where you don't want it and placing it where you do want it. Because in order for me to move my, my pointer finger from here to there, I have to do two things. I have to take it away from the object I don't want and place it on the object I do want. And so that's number one. One of the biggest hangups for us in reality creation is we tend to practice trying to place our attention on where we want it, but we notice how the ego mind keeps drawing our attention back to the thing we don't want. We keep going back to the lack beliefs and the lack thoughts and Every bill in the mail just provokes a terribly negative feeling in us and we don't turn that around into a positive affirmation. That's because we haven't yet chosen to consciously withdraw our energy from that thing. We haven't denounced it in ourself. And this is where we get into the conversation of empowerment versus bypassing. So I hope that you guys really lean into this part of the conversation because this is where the real transformation potential lies. If you can understand this, how do we avoid bypassing while becoming the creators? Because already I can sense you're probably thinking, well, you're telling me to deny something, but isn't that bypassing to deny something? Here's what we got to get. Emotions and thoughts, not the same thing. So here's how we avoid bypassing is that we first know my emotions are always correct and I am never rejecting what I feel. But my thoughts are in correct or incorrect. And so it's the thought that's causing the emotion that I am denying. And again, you're not even really denying it because nothing real can be threatened and nothing unreal exists. So you're, you can't actually deny what doesn't exist or isn't true. But for the sake of the mind that thinks it's true, right? The mind that thinks an, a falsity is truth to the mind as a concession, we say, ah, denounce that. In reality, it never existed, right? It's purely imagined. But to the mind, we say, consciously deny and withdraw your belief from that thought. And so we can literally, just like an affirmation, say, I denounce all belief in my mind in lack. I denounce all concepts of scarcity in my mind. And I affirm that I am all abundance right now. I affirm that only abundance exists and I am that. So we have, as the course says, a positive use of denial. And then we have a positive affirmation of the truth. That's how we make real ground. You guys in our level of consciousness is don't just, don't just try to affirm what's true, but actively see the false as false. And that has powerful implications in the mind. When you make an empowered stand against what is false, the mind loses a lot of energy immediately when you do that in that thought or idea. So we must always accept how we feel in this moment. 
It is never the feeling that we're denying, but the incorrect thought that produced that feeling. And so how do we deny a thought without suppressing our feelings? The answer is we have to disconnect those two things, right? And realize that we should always feel empowered if we're accurately denying the false, right? Denying the false, withdrawing your energy from an illusion should always feel empowering. So we use our emotional guidance system as our barometer to know when we're doing this successfully. So for example, if you try to deny your belief in lack and it makes you feel contracted inside, it, you don't feel expansive when you do that, when you say that, when you affirm that, then that's a sign that you are still trying to deny your emotion, right? If you try to deny the feeling of lack, the, the depression you have, the frustration you have, if you try to deny that feeling, you'll know because you'll feel more contracted as you try to suppress it. But as you deny, as you accept the feeling and deny the thought, you'll feel empowered and expansive. You guys can literally all do this right now. Close your eyes and repeat after me, whether verbally or inaudibly. I renounce all belief in unworthiness. Did that make you feel expansive to say that? Great. That's how you know you did it correctly. That was the positive use of denial. That's it. Congrats. One of the most powerful spiritual tools right there. You just did it. You just proved to yourself you can do it. Now, if saying that either didn't make you feel expansive or potentially contracted, put no in the chat. So that is a sign that you're still trying to reject the feelings associated with that belief in unworthiness. So what you would do in that case, for those of you who put no, is reaffirm the acceptance of the feeling, right? Accept thyself, go back to the first discipline, uh, love thyself, accept thyself. Take a few minutes to meditate on that feeling of unworthiness of love, uh, you know, rejection, abandonment, these things all fall under unworthiness, being unworthy of love. Feel that and affirm the truthful message that emotion's giving you. Thank you, grief or rejection for showing me that I'm perceiving myself incorrectly. I accept your message and I thank you for delivering it and feel some kind of just warmth in you of, of wrapping your arms around that painful feeling and saying, I got you, you're accepted here. And once you successfully can do that, and you shouldn't do anything else until you can do that, then go to the second discipline, know thyself. That's the masculine. Now know what's actually true about you. Know what's true of your eternal self rather than your dream character self, the ego self. Right, that's the second discipline. I am love itself. I'm beyond worthy of love. I am love. I am owed all love in the universe. That's the truth. It's just the truth. So can you now affirm that by doing those two things? Denounce your belief in unworthiness. Renounce it. I renounce all belief in unworthiness of love. And I affirm I am love itself and see if that doesn't feel expansive to some degree. Even if for a split second, even that's a victory, right? Your state of being is cluing you in that you connected successfully. So you see in this practice, we must consciously recall our I am energy from anything we've wrongly invested it in. That's just as important as trying to place it somewhere else. But again, never from a place of victimhood. We don't run away from the things we've been wrongly creating. Yeah, we're never threatened by anything. We do not fight or resist wrong thoughts or beliefs. We just flatly deny them reality. Just not true, doesn't exist, no consequence. Nothing ever happened. What is untrue has no consequences in reality. Reality has never been changed. So you can keep on affirming, I renounce all belief in unworthiness and I affirm that I am worthy of love. I am love itself. I am the creator's love in manifestation. I am. Spend some time during your day 
Doing those two things, positive use of denial and affirmation of truth. And before you even try to come at me saying, I can't do that. I want you all right now to think about, imagine in your mind's eye, an elephant. See an elephant. Now, see a lion. See a lion in your mind. Good. Now, think of the color blue. See blue in your mind. Think of the color green. See green in your mind. Okay, kindergarten level stuff here. Why do you need more power than that? Why do you think you don't have enough power to do this? You just did it. You just placed your attention where I told you to. So if you don't even want to place your attention on the, the person you want to be, the state of being you want to embody, the life you want to manifest, if you don't even want to place your attention on that more than the sucky, shitty life you've been manifesting, why should you have it? You obviously don't want it more yet. Because if you really wanted a life of love and abundance more, it would capture your whole heart and attention. You'd be transfixed on that vision all day, wouldn't you? And how joyful would it be for you to actively deny belief and lack from that position? Because saying no to what you don't want is saying yes to what you do want, right? It's the same thing metaphysically in two different polarities. I say no to what I don't want because that is simultaneously a yes to what I do want. So you should love denying the false. You should get up in the morning and say, God, oh, I can't wait to deny the false today. <laughs> Because if you're coming out of an old position and into a new one, that should be your highest excitement. Uncreate the reality you do not want and create the one that you do want. That's it. So if you can place your I am attention on an elephant or a lion or the color blue or the color green, why can't you place it on the reality you desire, the state of being you desire, right? You lack no power at all to create your reality. You only lack the will to use your power. Somebody just got that. <laughs> Somebody tell me you just got that. You don't lack the power. You lack the will to use your power. I hope you all feel personally called out by that one. Because <laughs> we've all done that. We're all doing that, right? We have all the power in the universe. As Jesus saw and realized, Jesus said, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. He knew it. If he's saying it's true of himself, he's saying that's true of you too. The implication is me equals you. Whatever is true of me is true of you. All power has been given to me, but the difference between us is I've realized it and I have the willpower to use it. So there's only one way of overcoming or rising out of anything. Yeah? And that is to take your I am attention completely away from it, denounce belief in it, and fix it firmly upon the higher ideal that you want to embody. That's it. But do you believe it's really that simple? I hope you do. It's so simple, it's difficult, right? Simple and easy are not the same thing. Simple is the, the structure of it, the framework, the understanding of it. Ah, oh, perfectly simple. What a brilliant brilliantly simple divine idea you create your reality based on where you place your attention and keep your attention right easy to understand easy to do by no means it will take time yeah it will take practice that's why we emphasize these practices so much here that's why we give you you know, workbook practices. And that's why we give you affirmations to return to again and again, because you gotta be affirming the truth of yourself all day long in your heart. Do you love anything more than that? Do you wanna know the truth and live from the truth more than anything? Then you'll gladly do this practice. You, I couldn't stop you from doing it, right? Because if you know that you want a fancy car and you have a means of making lots of money to buy that car, don't you love the act of working at that point when your work is paying off and you're building, building, building closer and closer to that dream car or dream house? You can't wait to get up and go to work every day because you're feeling the momentum that's happening. In the same way, 
When you're positively denying what's untrue, the false beliefs you've been giving your attention to, and you're placing it where you want, that should be the funnest thing for you. Just like manifesting your dream house would be the funnest thing for you, right? That is how we create our state of being. That is how we become the creator. Every day, consciously utilizing, harnessing our I am power to govern and create our reality. Could that be put any simpler?